Hi, how are you? I'm back at work after having to self-isolate for 10 days because I tested positive for COVID. So it's nice to be back with, with these guys. And because we're on kind of an immune subject with the COVID and the thing, I thought we'd talk about uh, the immune system. I thought we'd talk about the thymus. Now the anatomy of the thymus, but I need to do a bit more than the anatomy for it to make sense. All right. The thymus gets called the thymus gland. It's not really, it's a structure we find in the chest. We'll talk about where it is, where we find it, what its job is, how it changes through life and, you know, blood supply, innovation, whatever. You know, anatomy stuff, okay? Um, the thymus. You'll see why I'm a bit wibbly wobbly as we go around, all right? <laughs> uh, because we have to talk about the immune system, so we have to talk about cells, to talk about function, to talk about the purpose of the thymus gland, to talk about its anatomy, all right? All right, what do you know about the immune system? Me, my, my knowledge is, is pretty rudimentary. Uh, the cell of the immune system, okay, there are... Oh. Uh, the... <laughs> okay, one, one arm less. The cells of the immune system, there are lots of different cells in the immune system, but the, the cell we most commonly attribute to the immune system is the lymphocyte. So the lymphocyte is a cell of the lymphatic system, um, of lymph nodes and lymphoid tissues. We'll come back to that. And that's, that's how it was like first, first discovered. Now, lymphocytes have a number of roles in the immune system, and there are lots of other cells in the immune system, like monocytes and macrophages and so on and so on and so on. But we talk about T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. Now, lymphocytes in the adult, they all come from, and in children and adolescents, they all come from the hematopoietic stem cells within the bone marrow. And that bone marrow is largely found within long bones. All right, so we have stem cells in long bones. We have hematopoietic stem cells, cells of the blood precursors that can keep producing new cells for the blood throughout life. And one of the cell types that differentiates from that stem cell is the lymphocyte. And they can become B lymphocytes or T lymphocytes. And today we're particularly interested in the T lymphocytes. And they're called T lymphocytes because of the involvement of the thymus, all right? Now, what we're talking about here is the, the acquired or adaptive immune system, right? That is um, the ability of your immune system to recognize pathogens, so external things like um, viruses or bacteria that have entered the body that want to use your body to make more of themselves but would be a bad thing and your immune system can adapt to these new pathogens that they've never seen before and destroy them and stop them from taking over your body okay so t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes must work together for this to happen now what happens is is that um, precursors of the t lymphocyte uh, are produced from stem cells in the bone marrow and they find their way to the thymus which lives in the, in the chest. The thymus is deep to the sternum. We'll have a look at it in a moment. And the, the cells here, they differentiate. So at one stage they get called thymocytes. So that's a useful word to think of. So inside the thymus, those precursors become thymocytes and differentiate to become T lymphocytes. And then from the thymus, they move on through the lymphatic system and the blood to reside in lymphoid tissues around the body. By lymphoid tissues, I mean tonsils, um, the spleen, payers, patches around the GI tract, things like that. Those are secondary lymphoid tissues. Those are tissues that B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes go and live in. And they live there, they kind of move around and stuff. Now, the T lymphocytes, when they're becoming T lymphocytes in the thymus, what's going on here is that the, the T lymphocytes are being taught, they're being trained to recognize the cells of the body. 
so that they don't attack those normal, healthy human cells of the body. One of their other jobs is to recognize when a cell has become a cancerous cell and destroy that cell. It's part of the, the error checking mechanism, right? Um, but otherwise, uh, T lymphocytes are trained to recognize the cells of the body as the cells of the body. So that when those cells, if they get infected by a virus and the cells, you start seeing, those, the T lymphocytes start seeing new epitopes, new bits of protein and what have you sticking out from the surface of the cell, they recognize that cell has been infected, they can trigger an immune reaction and destroy that cell, okay? This is really important because if the T lymphocytes don't learn properly, to recognize the cells of the body, they might attack the cells of the body with the immune system. And that would become an autoimmune disease, right? So in diseases where the immune system is attacking the body when it shouldn't, something has gone wrong in that or another process by which the cells of the immune system should recognize the cells of the body when they're healthy and they don't. Okay then, so here's the the chest and the neck. What can we see? All right, well, here's the sternum, uh, manubrium, body of the sternum. These are the ribs. Here's the second rib here. This is the clavicle. So here's the manubrium. If I take this away, this is the thymus. This is a place where um, cells of the immune system go to mature. So it gets classed as a primary lymphoid organ, as does the bone marrow, his arms off. So the bone marrow and the thymus are primary lymphoid organs because this is where um, cells of the immune system are made from stem cells or they mature significantly. Um, now, as I said, the T lymphocytes from here can go off around the body and then live in secondary lymphoid organs. It is in the superior mediastinum, this is the heart here. If I pop this off, maybe we can see a little bit better. The thymus, if I pop it off, is anterior to the great vessels in the superior mediastinum. Here is the superior vena cava, here is the aorta, here is the pulmonary trunk. These two veins here are brachiocephalic veins, and this is the heart. So if I put the thymus back on, that's where it resides. So we see it lying anterior to the great vessels in the superior mediastinum and also kind of overlying the upper part of the heart. It can extend superiorly as far as the thyroid gland, which is what this is here. So the thyroid gland is in the neck, the thymus is in the chest. Don't mix the two up. All right? The thymus has two lobes, a bit like the thyroid, which makes it easier to confuse, uh, linked in the middle by an isthmus, like a, an eye, you know, a joining bit, a bit like the thyroid gland, makes it easy to mix them up, um, but it's down here. Um, if we were to cut sections through this and look at the cells, we would find um, a reticular network of epithelial cells, that is kind of like a, a net, right? like a network weave with a thin capsule around it. It does have an outer cortex and a central medulla and the organization of cells is a little bit different and the types of cells you'll find in those two different places will be a little bit different. But to all intents and purposes, we have this epithelial reticular network holding thymocytes, maturing cells, that will, may become T lymphocytes, and the T lymphocytes are maturing inside there. Now the blood supply, um, so the main blood supply would be the internal thoracic arteries, which are deep to the, the rib cage running down here, and also the inferior thyroid artery, because the inferior thyroid artery is passing. The, you see what I mean? It's just kind of close. And the venous drainage is described as similarly through the internal thoracic veins, uh, through the, inter, the inferior thyroid vein. And look, this guy over here. So the left brachiocephalic vein has to travel further from left to right to drain into the superior vena cava. 
So it's also said that the thymus drains into the left brachiocephalic vein because of the arrangement of that anatomy. That's how the T lymphocytes will leave. And I understand that lymph drains, there are lymphatic, lymphatic vessels draining, so they could also take that route. Now, the weird fact about the thymus is that it's um, large at birth and during childhood and gets bigger as everything else gets bigger and it's large during adolescence. But then in early adulthood, it begins to shrink. It gets smaller. And as we get older and reach middle age and, and become older, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It involutes and is replaced by fat, which means that when I dissect the cadavers that we get here, which are donated to us by people who are older, late in life, and are making decisions about the end of their life and what they would like to happen to their bodies after death, those people don't have a thymus that I can find anymore. When I'm dissecting, we find some fat in this area because fat is the great space packer in the body. And we don't find a capsulated gland, certainly nothing of this size. And if I went looking for it and dissected carefully, I would still struggle to find a thymus in an elderly person. Um, even with histology, it's supposed to be difficult. So the thymus shrinks with age, meaning that the function of the thymus the activity of the thymus is greatest during childhood and adolescence when the immune system is developing, when that adaptive immune system is forming. Um, one thing that people get confused about is that, oh, does that mean you can't make more T lymphocytes when you're an adult? That's not true. So once, you've, once the T lymphocytes have been matured in the thymus and moved on to those secondary lymphoid organs, those T lymphocytes living in the body can, can proliferate. So they, you can make more of that adult cell type, more copies of it. So you can make more T lymphocytes from the T lymphocytes stored in the body. You don't need the thymus. That's just for the first bit. There you go then, the relevant anatomy of the thymus. It's in the superior mediastinum inside the thorax. It's close to the thyroid, so don't confuse the two. Um, and it's the site where T lymphocytes form during early stages in life. We looked at the blood supply. The innovation is largely about controlling that blood flow, so we're not too worried about it. But you see now why I needed to talk about T lymphocytes, to talk about the thymus, because it's absolutely integral to its, its function, it's, it's part of it. So T lymphocytes are named so because of their time spent with the thymus maturing. B lymphocytes are then named because they come from the bone marrow. But T lymphocytes also come from the bone marrow. In fact, B lymphocytes were first named for the chicken bursa, this lymphoid structure in a chicken that they were first discovered as being useful in. Immunology is kind of a new science. I mean, I'm led to believe that before the 1960s, when immunologists worked out the thymus's role in T lymphocyte maturation, this thing was considered to be one of those vestigial organs, one of these leftovers from evolution that probably doesn't do anything. But now we know that it does, like some of the other vestigial organs in the body, like the appendix, that turns out to be useful. But there you go, thymus where it is, when it is, because of course it disappears with time, blood supply, blah, 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 all that sort of thing. All right. I'm sorry if I mucked up any immunology there. I'm an anatomist, not an immunologist. I'm trying. Uh, see you next week.